Much of the prophetic material, as well as psalms and wisdom, some of the wisdom literature, like Proverbs or Job, have a great deal of poetry. And so in this lecture, we're going to look and see what is Hebrew poetry like. Now, for a long time, nobody quite knew what characterized Hebrew poetry because in the Western world, people were more used to things like meter or stress patterns or rhyme and such things. But those things don't seem to be characteristic of Hebrew poetry. In the 18th century, a man named Robert Louth came up with some characteristics of Hebrew poetry and he noticed that what is most characteristic is what is called parallelism, where you have maybe half a verse or two lines together that go together in some way. They are parallel. And so he came up with some very broad categories of what that looked like. And one of those is what he called synonymous parallelism. This is where the two lines say pretty much the same thing. And there are equivalent elements in each half verse. So, for example, in Psalm 24.1, the earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it. So earth and world are parallel. All that is in it and those who live in it are parallel. Another example is, you have turned my mourning into dancing. You have taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Here there are three phrases that are parallel. You have turned, you have taken off, you have clothed me are parallel to one another. Mourning into dancing, my sackcloth with joy are parallel elements. Or you could simply say that my mourning into dancing is equal to my sackcloth with joy. In Isaiah, we have this verse, every valley will be raised up and every mountain and hill will be flattened. Uneven ground will become level, rough terrain, a valley plain. So, uneven ground and rough terrain are equal and level and plain, meaning of a flat area. He also pointed to what is called antithetic parallelism, where you have the evil of the wicked is contrasted to the righteous come to an end is contrasted to establish. So you have sort of opposite things being said. In Psalm 1827, you deliver versus you bring down humble people versus haughty eyes. Again, in Psalm 20, the verb is the same, but there is a contrast between some and our pride. And the pride that the some take is in chariots and horses, but ours is in the name of the Lord our God. So there's a contrasting verse. Synthetic parallelism is a very broad category and it simply means you have sort of two versets or half verses, 
but they aren't necessarily connected in any close way. So you can have from the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. So the thought continues beyond the first line. We have kind of a complicated one in Psalm 37 where the second and third lines uh, declare the purpose of the first line. And so it's not really, para it's not really syn synonymous, it's not really antithetic. The wicked draw their sword and bend their bows to bring down, to kill. It is interesting that the second and third lines themselves are parallel, have synonymous parallelism. To bring down and to kill, poor and needy, parallel to those who walk uprightly. And he also pointed to what he called mixed. So in Psalm 68, 6, you have the first two lines are synonymous with each other, but those first two lines are antithetic to the third line. Much the same thing happens in 37.7. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him is the opposite of do not fret. And yet, do not fret over those who prosper in their way, over those who carry out evil devices, are parallel to one another. So you have both antithetic and synonymous going on in the same verse. Much research has been done since Robert Loth, and it has been realized there's a lot more subtlety going on. Robert Alter, who has looked a lot at the literary aspects of the Bible, considers that the, the basic move is a dynamic move from one verset, one part verse to the next. And that movement can be one of heightening or intensifying, focusing, making more specific, making more concrete, making more dramatic. So in they are parallel, but the second line does something extra that the first line did not do. J.G. Herder talked about two parallel members strengthen, heighten, empower each other. The sense is of theme and variation. The first line is the theme, the second line is the variation. In Job 15, the second line, instead of the word man, uses the term he born of woman and this has been interpreted to put an emphasis on frailty that one is a very begins as a very tiny child and very helpless in job 41 16 through 17 the move from the first to the second first set is from the general to the specific. The move from line three to four is one of intensification. In Jeremiah 31, the first return is to Israel in general the second is more specifically your cities, so it extends the thought, makes it more specific. In Job 5.10, the second line refers to a smaller geographical space. In Song of Songs, this is rather intricate. 
So in the first line, you have flowers and you have hazamir in the second line, which can either mean singing or pruning. So with pruning, that would go with the first line, but the meaning singing would go with the third line. The voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. This is called Janus parallelism. One word with two meanings serves as kind of a hinge or pivot between the first and third line. In Job 30.10, the second line uses a term that implies a more extreme action, not just keeping aloof, but actual spitting. In Psalm 18.8, there's an intensification from smoke to fire to glowing coals flaming forth. In Job 29.23, there's a move from the very literal to a figurative meaning. In Genesis 27.29, be Lord over your brothers, and may the sons of your mother bow down to you. In the first line, the subject becomes the object in the second line. In Job 30, 27, here it's a move from intense to less intense. Inward parts are in turmoil is a much stronger term than in days of affliction. Job 27.4 just seems to be synonymous, speak falsehood, utter deceit. In Micah 6 2b, the meaning is the same. The Lord has a quarrel with his people and with Israel will he dispute, but the grammar is different. Same meaning, different grammar. In Job 6.15, there are two uses of the same word, like a stream, like beds of streams. And yet there's a variation in in, in the form of the word. In Proverbs 620, you have the same meaning, but one line states it positively, the other negatively. So guard my son the commandments of your father. Do not forsake the teaching of your mother. The intent is the same with both. In Job 5.14, we have word pairs, darkness, night, day, and noon. But these are reversed, so one would expect day and noon to go together, but rather day goes with darkness and night goes with noon.